Hello everybody, Tech Guy Charlie here. If you are new to Samsung Galaxy smartphones, here are 15 features and some tips and tricks that will make using the phone a lot easier. Also, if you enjoy watching these kind of videos, do make sure to check out the channel because I have plenty of video tutorials on Samsung phones. Anyways, let's get started. Alright, so you have just spent your precious time creating that perfect home screen setup. You've got your favorite widgets and icons on the home screen. Now, the problem is, it is very easy to misplace and relocate these widgets and the icons, especially if you are holding the phone like this at a weird angle. So look at that, we have accidentally moved the widget onto the other home screen. So to prevent this from happening, once you finish setting up your home screen, pinch in, go to settings, and then enable this feature which says lock home screen layout. And after you enable this feature, that will prevent the relocation of the icons and the widgets on the home screen as you can see it says home screen layout is locked all right so moving on now let me give you some tips and tricks for the camera so what do you do if you want to record a video well usually you will change the camera mode from photo to video but you don't really need to do that if you want to quickly take a video just press and hold the camera shutter button in the photo mode and the phone will start recording a video and it will continue to record a video as long as your finger is on the screen. Let go of the finger and the video will be saved in the gallery. Also, here's a tip for you guys. If you want to use the ultra wide angle lens to record videos in the photo mode, select the lens first and then press and hold the camera shutter button and the phone will record a video. And same goes for the telephoto lens. And this is one of the most useful features on this phone because you don't have to waste time switching the camera mode from photo to video. Now, there is one limitation when you record videos in the photo mode. The camera will always record videos in 1080p, so you don't get to record 4K videos in the photo mode. To record 4K videos, you have to change the camera mode from photo to video. But here's the thing, if you are recording videos to post on social media, 1080p is more than enough. And I always use this feature to take videos for my Instagram account. Very very convenient and super useful. So here's a mistake that I see many people make while they are recording a video. So usually people will hold the phone like this in portrait mode and start recording a video. And gradually after 2 or 3 seconds, they will change the orientation of the phone from portrait to landscape. And if you do this, the video will become completely unwatchable later on in the gallery. I'll show you why. So let's stop and review the video that we have just recorded. So here's our video. It starts off just fine in portrait, but as the video's orientation changes, you will also want to change the phone's orientation. So you will hold your phone like this, but this creates another problem. The phone will automatically change the video's orientation. So you will have to hold the phone like this to watch the video. So this happens because we started recording the video holding the phone in portrait mode like this and while the video recording was going on, we changed the phone's orientation to landscape. The solution to that is very simple. Before you start recording the video, decide which orientation you want to record the video in. If you want to record your videos in landscape mode like this, change the phone's orientation to landscape first and then hit the record button and continue to record the entire video holding your phone like this in landscape mode. And if you want to record videos in portrait mode like this, hold your phone in portrait mode, start recording and keep your phone like this. Don't change the orientation to landscape. So yeah, I see many people doing this and later on the videos become completely unwatchable. Want to show your photos and videos to your friends and family on a smart TV? Well, no problem. You can use screen mirroring for this. Let me show you how. Alright, so first switch your TV on, then grab your Samsung Galaxy smartphone, drop down the notification panel and locate smart view. And if your smart TV supports screen mirroring, it will automatically show up over here. Simply tap the model of your TV, then tap on start now. And as you can see, that starts casting the screen of your phone onto the TV. And pretty much any modern smart TV can do this. I am demonstrating this to you on a 6 year old LG WebOS smart TV so you really don't need a Samsung TV to use smart view on your Samsung Galaxy smartphone. And one thing I really like about this is that whenever you play a video, it will automatically change the screen orientation from portrait to landscape. 
plus the video playback controls are on the phone. Also, the video playback is super smooth, haven't noticed any lags or any stuttering, so that's nice. A lot of people prefer having subtitles or captions enabled whenever they watch a video, but you might have noticed not every video has subtitles embedded in them. As an example, this video does not have any subtitles embedded inside it. So the thing is, you can actually have the phone generate subtitles or captions in real time for any video that you watch on your phone. How do you do this? Well, press the volume button and then tap on these three dots to expand the volume panel. Over here, tap on this button and that will enable a feature called live captions. So now, whenever you play a video which has speech in it, the phone will auto-generate subtitles or captions. So as you can see, the phone is automatically generating captions for the video that's playing back. And this happens in real time, plus it's offline. So you can disconnect your phone from the internet and it will still be able to generate captions. So this is such an amazing feature. You can watch videos without actually turning the sound on. Now, depending on the software configuration on your Samsung phone, you may or you may not have the live caption option in the volume panel over here. For example, on my Galaxy Note 10 Plus, there is no live caption button in the volume panel. So all you have to do is go to settings and then search for live caption. And you will see live caption is inside accessibility under hearing enhancements. So go to live captions and turn this feature on use live captions and that will enable live captions just like it does on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. So how do you take a screenshot on a Samsung phone? Well, it is very easy. You swipe your palm over the screen like this and that takes a screenshot. You actually have to touch the screen and swipe your palm and as you can see that takes a screenshot. Now you can press on this button and that will allow you to edit the screenshot right away and pressing this button, save the screenshot. Now, if this feature does not work on your phone, drop down the notification panel, go to settings, scroll down to advanced features, then tap on motion and gestures, and over here, make sure palm swipe to capture is enabled. So this lets you take a screenshot by swiping your palm on the screen like this. The second way to do it is by pressing the volume down key and the power key, and that takes a screenshot. Now, if you are trying to capture something in the web browser, obviously it's not gonna fit into a single screenshot. So how do you capture everything in a single screenshot? Well, it is very easy. Let's take a screenshot first. Now, press on this button and that will scroll the page down like this and the phone will take a screenshot of the entire page. And that's it. We have taken a screenshot of the entire page. It will be in our gallery. It is right over here. And you can zoom this all the way in. Also, whenever you take screenshots in the web browser, the phone kind of embeds the website information where you took the screenshot. So you will see a little button in the gallery which says go to website. So for example, let's close all of these, go back into the gallery and if I tap this button, it will take me to the same website where I took the screenshot. So that is a super useful feature. Okay, so you are playing back a video on your phone and you like a particular scene in the video. So for example, I like this particular scene in the video and I want to save a snapshot of this. Usually people will take a screenshot like this and then waste their time cropping the photo. Well, don't do that. Pause the video and then press on this button and that will extract a full resolution still image from the video. So here is the still image that we grabbed from the video. Now, what is the difference between this and the screenshot? Well, the video was in 4K and this still image is also in 4K. Meanwhile, our screenshot, which is over here, is not in 4K. And also because this is a screenshot, the video player controls are also over here. And if you zoom in, it's going to be blurry. Now, what do you do if you want to crop this photo? Say, for example, you like this particular scene and you want to crop the photo as it appears on the screen of your phone. Well, press on this button and that will take a screenshot of the photo as it appears on the screen. So here is the screenshot that we just took of this picture. And now we can set this as our wallpaper. So there you have it. That picture is now our background. Now, if you are playing back a video and if you turn the screen off, you'll notice that the audio also stops along with the video. And the same happens if you try to minimize the video player. 
So if I minimize the gallery slash video player, the audio will also stop. So what do you do if you just want to listen to the audio of a video? Okay, so first select the video that you want to watch. So this is a video. Then tap on these three dots and then select open in video player. Now inside the video player, tap on these three dots again and then select settings. Over here, enable play audio only. So once you enable this feature, the video player will continue playing the audio if you minimize it or if you switch the screen off. So this feature is useful if you want to listen to some video lectures. You don't have to keep the screen of your phone switched on in order to listen to an audio in a video. Now one thing you have to keep in mind is that this does not work in the gallery. You have to open the video then tap on these three dots and select open in video player. So gallery is not capable of that. Only the video player is capable of playing audio of a video in the background like this. If you have a smart internet connected device, what you can do is drop down the notification panel and tap on devices and add a toggle switch right over here. So this is the Xiaomi bedside lamp. I can switch it on and off right from over here inside the drop down notification panel under devices. Usually you will have to launch the third party device application to control them. But I think it's much easier to control from the device button over here inside the drop down notification panel. So let me show you how to get this under devices. So drop down the notification panel, go to devices, then tap on these three dots and then select manage apps. And the phone will show the supported apps right over here. So I'm going to enable Xiaomi home and from over here, choose which device that you want to show. So I will add these three devices to the list and that is pretty much all you need to do. So from over here, you can now switch your devices on and off. Check it out. It even works for the bedroom lights. And this is a lot faster than launching the application. You can also change the calling screen background. The phone allows you to put a custom still image or a video from the gallery as the background of the calling screen. And this looks a lot better compared to the boring blue background that the phone comes with. Anyways, let me show you how to do this. All right, so on your phone, open up the dialer, then press on these three dots and then go to settings. Then tap on call background. Over here, you have two options, layout and background. So you can also change the calling screen layout. So this is the second layout. But if you want to change the background, tap on background, then tap on this plus icon and select from gallery. Now you got to pick a still image or a video. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to pick this video. Now it says over here, video too long and large. Tap the scissors to trim the video down to 15 seconds. So we're going to tap this button. Just select the part that you want to play in the calling screen. Once you are done, press on done and wait for the phone to finish processing and you will get a little preview over here. Now there is also this option use video sound as ringtone. So you can also use the video sound as the ringtone Then tap on set as background and that is pretty much all there is to it. Phone number. So now whenever you get a phone call, that video is going to play back as the calling screen background. And also that audio is actually the audio of the video. Or if you set a still image, you will see a still image as the calling screen background. The background will also appear whenever you make a phone call. So right now I'm making a phone call from this phone and you can see that custom background. For incoming calls, you can have the phone read out the caller's name. Charlie. So this is a really cool feature. Let me show you how to enable this. All right, so on your phone, again, open up the dialer, then press on these three dots and go to settings. Then tap on answering and ending calls, then enable this feature which says read caller names aloud. Once you enable this, tap over here and set this to always. And that is it. Whenever you get an incoming call, the phone will read out the caller's name. Charlie. Just like that. So you're gonna know who's calling you without actually looking at the screen. Whenever you get an incoming phone call, you'll notice that the incoming call display takes over the entire screen. So as you can see, I'm getting an incoming phone call and this screen has taken over the entire phone. Kinda annoying, right? And even after I receive this, it's still gonna stay on the screen. Well, you can actually change this behavior. Let me show you how. So on your phone, open up the dialer, then press on these three dots and then go to settings. Tap on call display while using apps and set this to pop up. 
Then turn this feature on which says keep calls in pop-up. And now whenever you receive an incoming call, it's not going to take up the entire screen of your phone. So as you can see, the incoming call prompt is on the top of the display and I can answer this and it will still stay at the top of the screen. So this enables me to work on other applications while making a phone call. And if you want to expand this, tap over here and it will go back to full screen. This is how you can change the calling screen behavior on your Samsung Galaxy smartphone. So I guess that pretty much brings us to the end of the video. Hope you have enjoyed and do subscribe to the channel if you enjoy watching these kind of videos. And guys, don't forget to follow me on my social media accounts. I'll put all the links in the video description. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos like these and I'll see you guys next time.